Owsley. Uh, Eric Gusser, criminal defense attorney. Rod Wheeler, former D.C. homicide detective. Join us now. Dr. Gina Loudon is back as well. You know, as, as Adam was talking, Rod, I'm, I'm thinking about this, uh, the, this uh, terror threat to the school systems of New York and Los Angeles. And, right. you know, uh, it was written off early on New York City saying, you know, it was obviously a hoax. But then since then, there's been a rethinking on this. Maybe it was so clumsily done, but nevertheless done. And we to see what kind of preparations uh, these school systems had. So if these guys were thinking about scaring or, or forcing students out of a community college to make them easier targets, Right. That, that gives you sort of pause about perhaps what happened earlier this week, too. Well, it does. And it also kind of goes to show you the method by which these uh, local homegrown terrorists operate. You know, the other information that was in that 37 page document that Adam was just talking about uh, yesterday when it was presented to the court. Uh, what was really interesting is how the police talked about how Tashfeen, the woman, she actually went into this office party and she set a bag on a table. Charles, this is really interesting. The bag contained pipe bombs. Now, she walked out and she left for about 20 minutes and she left the pipe bombs there so it almost looks like that's exactly what the plan was when they you know ambushed that office party for people to run out so that they can start shooting people you know gina uh the path to uh radicalization <laughs> it's been interesting they're looking into this with respect to enrique marquez and it, it, I, for me, it looks like a two-pronged thing, and you're, you know, you, you deal with the human minds and how people, what motivates people. But early on, it looks like Saeed befriended him as, as you know, it's a 14-year-old awkward teenager. They worked on cars together, and then later on, they sealed the deal with Tashfeen's sister marrying this guy, uh, you know, and it just felt like he ha didn't have a chance with respect to being radical, radicalized. And I, I don't know, how does that work? Because it feels like there's a lot of teenagers out there who could be sitting ducks for this. Yeah, I think, I think that we need to become more equipped as a society of looking at the psychological factors that contribute to this. You know, uh, that alienation, rejected from peers, feeling like a loner, uh, feeling like you uh, are in a world that doesn't understand you. Those are all things that are going to be the case with most people that come here in this, under the same circumstances as he did. And so uh, being able to pick up on those things early to figure out who they're hanging out with, um, it's a really important thing that we're going to have to look at going forward. Eric and uh, they're saying that this couple uh, and also, you know, deliberately picked him out because he might be able to avoid uh, profiling. You know, we hear about profiling and, mm. and listen, I, I, whether we all want to admit it or not, I think to a certain degree we all are profiling right now. I remember after 9-11, I took a trip to Abu Dhabi and I was afraid, but I'm like, golly, I'm going to Abu Dhabi. Everyone's going to scare me on this plane. I, but I, I digress a little bit there. But the idea is that he was deliberately picked. Maybe that's why they targeted him from a young age, but so how do we figure this out? How do we how do we even say hey, profiling may not be enough? And that's what the federal government has to do. They they have to have people much smarter than us to figure all this out because we can we can think about profiling where we're looking for someone who quote, looks like a terrorist. However, that is not enough because they're going for people who can fly under the radar, just like anyone. But having said that, Eric, then that means isn't that doesn't that really mean the, the responsibility for local, uh, you know, the average person on your job, you know, because this guy Enrique was a chatterbox. He talked about this kind of yeah. stuff. They could have right. busted this a long time ago. And so I mean, we shocking. know the federal government has a role, but what's the role of, uh, of the average ordinary citizen? If you see something, let people know. And we know that there have been cases like the clock boy where there's been discussion back and forth with all three of us. Me, you and Rod argued about this a couple weeks ago, but we have to let people know so they can go check it out. Even if it's considered profiling, if you're right. afraid of something, you have to let someone know. I think a lot of people too consider him a loser. You know, ah, he's just a loser. He's talking, yeah. you know, but mm -mm. from now on, take these guys seriously. Rod, I want to just point something out. We've got breaking news right now. Uh, in mm -hmm. Chicago, a large crowd has gathered. It seems like spontaneous. We know it's warm. We know they're angry. Look at this, Rod. It's uh, they're demanding change, and, and this one feels a little different. I think Jesse Jackson was involved in some of these things. They were targeting the business district. This has a different feel to it. What are your thoughts? Well, I'll tell you what they're demanding, Charles, is that uh, Rahm Emanuel get out of town. Um, that's basically what this march is about. These people in Chicago are tired of the rhetoric and they're tired of being, uh, you know, patronized by Rahm Emanuel. And that's why we see this, uh, this march out there tonight. I got to tell you guys, we're going to keep an eye on it, but it looks a little ominous. I understand where they're coming from, uh, but um, we'll, we'll watch it for you guys. Thank you very, very much. Tell you what, it was an ugly day on the stock market. In fact, the market said, whatever, Janet. It